Hello, everyone. Um, welcome. Thank you for joining us today, uh, especially uh, on Election Day. Uh, thank you for taking the time and energy uh, for coming out. Uh, my name is Zach Rainey. I'm a Corporate Partnerships Manager here at Plug and Play. Um, and uh, here I have some illustrious members from Moeco, Kyle and Alexa. They're going to be giving a, a presentation shortly on the state of distributed and decentralized applications, DApps, DApps, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and um, But uh, just uh, briefly, before we get into the presentation, I want to give just a rundown for the uninitiated uh, on Plug and Play, who we are, what we do. Um, well, first of all, Plug and Play is the ultimate innovation platform. We kind of pride ourselves on uh, being uh, a, an innovation platform uh, and a, truly a global phenomenon. Uh, we, we basically have three different um, uh, 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 branches of uh, business. Uh, we have our venture capital arm where we deploy roughly 200 to 250 investments per year. Uh, we have, of course, our corporate innovation platform, which many of you are interacting with us through today. Uh, where we have over 400 uh, industry leaders and 19 industry-specific verticals um, working with us and uh, collaborating, uh, collaborating with us uh, on our accelerator programs, uh, which again, we have 19 industry-specific accelerator programs that we help and accelerate uh, startups in those fields. Um, besides uh, just uh, helping corporations and startups, we really do uh, see ourselves as a platform. So it's not just those entities. We really do uh, uh, like to collaborate with our, our mentors, our integral to our, our ecosystem, our VCs, our investors, uh, government bodies, universities, regulators. We really try to bring them all together to make sure that innovation is uh, at the forefront of uh, what um, is happening uh, on, a, on, a global, uh, on a global scale. Uh, today, we um, roughly have um, uh, 38 locate. Uh, we work with uh, corporations and uh, VCs and startups in a myriad of different ways. For our corporate partners, we do matchmaking, uh, corporate innovation, of course, um, and we uh, facilitate a lot of these things through our deal flow sessions and peer to peer networking. Besides that, our startups uh, do get to interact with accelerator programs, um, uh, all the ones that we have mentioned before, um, and uh, they get to uh, get the BD and they get access to our uh, basically plug and play on a global scale to help them uh, scale globally. Uh, 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 that being said, we have roughly uh, 38 locations worldwide, as you can see uh, that we have on our map here. And through these locations, we have sourced uh, 35,000 startups uh, and adding uh, daily. Uh, we have ventures associates that are adding uh, all of these um, uh, uh, that are uh, going day in and day out, uh, uh, probing the wild for uh, the best and uh, startups uh, that we can find in each uh, industry. Um, that being said, if you want to engage with Plug and Play, if you're if you're new to the platform, uh, there's a lot of different ways uh, that you can reach out. You can reach out to Zach at PMPTC or any of our other Plug and Play associates. Uh, feel free to engage directly through our programs, our events, like the event you're here at today, as well as um, a, a couple of our other services. If you're interested in uh, hearing more about those, feel free to reach out to our team. We'd be, we'd be happy to talk to you about it. Um, that being said, uh, I don't want to take up too much more of your time, so uh, allow me to introduce uh, Kyle and Alexa from Moeco. I would be uh, more than happy to hear more about uh, DApps or DApps. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll correct me on that. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Zach. And funny enough, that's exactly part of what we're going to be talking about today is, is it DApps, is it DApps, or is it distributed decentralized applications? What does this all look like in this exciting world as we look towards the next generation of applications. So you are spot on uh, in, in your pronunciation and thank you so much, uh, not only to you, but to Ali, to Tiffany, to the entire uh, plug and play team uh, and organization who have been so, so foundational and helpful to, to us as a company at Moeco, but also uh, in putting together this webinar series with us as well. So a huge shout out to, to you three and to the entire team and organization. Uh, even bigger shout out to the new materials and packaging along with the IOT programs who have been incredibly supportive of Alexa and I and the Moeco team at putting this series of webinars together that we have been speaking about week over week around the latest in technologies and innovations and mostly around the industrial 4.0 or industry 4.0 uh, as some refer to it as as well. And looking at how technology is converging with industries around the world and how this is happening at such an accelerated scale here, not just in 2020, but looking ahead into the years in front of us as well. So a big shout out, validating everything Zach just said to you. For those that are tuning in for the first time, 
uh, plug and play is outstanding. We've had the pleasure of going through a few different programs, which is very exciting and valuable for us at Moeco, but also myself personally have been a very big fan uh, and supporter of the plug and play ecosystem for, for more than a decade at this point. So Zach, great job. And again, thank you to the plug and play team. Before we get started, as I've been rambling uh, here for just a moment, I do want Alexa, our, our co-founder and COO at Moeco, to provide a quick introduction on herself, and then I'll give an introduction and we'll, we'll jump in. So Alexa, if you're there, a uh, quick introduction uh, on yourself, and then we'll go ahead and jump into the today's topic. Thanks, Kyle. I'm here. Um, so uh, myself and Kyle are doing this webinar on behalf of Moeco and, and Plug and Play to share our expertise and um, uh, experience working with the corporate companies and providing them technologies. But uh, we want to share more about what that is, why is that uh, we're uh, using this decentralized system as a part of Moeco um, and being operationally involved. I just want to share some more of the um, examples of how it could be applied to the real businesses. And I let Kyle uh, share his experience about uh, what's an, an education uh, that what he does uh, about what decentralized applications are and uh, uh, how to pronounce it and, and how to apply it into real uh, business. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alexa. And, and guys, as, as we mentioned, so I'm Kyle Alicott, so I'm an advisor here at Moeco, but I'm also co-founder of Topio Networks and a company that we're partnered with uh, very heavily here uh, at Moeco. And as Alexa mentioned, we're going to go through uh, what decentralized applications are today and why this world of both decentralized and distributed plays such an important role in the future infrastructures and architectures of our core businesses going forward. Um, and the reason I mentioned all of this along with Alexa and her introduction is that we do do a lot of deep research and looking at all of the landscape and where everything is and what it takes to build and really create a decentralized application. So we're gonna go through a little bit of that uh, today for you uh, as well. Uh, and so before we get started, like we like to do on, on all of these webinars is kind of take a step back before we get into the fun and exciting and then jump forward. So one of the things that uh, we like to talk about when it comes to blockchain or distributed technology is in the beginning of it, it's, it wasn't, wasn't built in a day, uh, right? So uh, when we look at the internet in its current form, the internet is wonderful. Uh, the internet did not happen overnight. It's it's been decades in its in its uh, build and development to get to where we are here today in 2020. And very similar to blockchain or distributed technologies, these things are still in their very early days. And when we look at the history, we go back to 2008. 2008, October 31st, 2008. Just recently, we celebrated its anniversary. Uh, was the original launch date of a white paper, our technical white paper about this. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer system, P2P electronic cash system called Bitcoin, uh, and shortly thereafter, the Genesis block. So January 3rd, as it's recorded, on 2009, the Genesis block, the very first, was actually created of Bitcoin, uh, and that began our journey. So if we look at that, we're we're only about 12 years into this journey of the idea of big distributed decentralized systems. Uh, as well. And we had cloud and we've been working in cloud, but now moving into this next phase, it's been only uh, just over a decade. And as we went through that, we went kind of dark for a little bit. So from 2009 to 2013, it was, it was very quiet in the industry. Um, and then in 2013, uh, a group led by uh, David Johnson uh, came together to form this general theory of decentralized applications, a deep deep technical uh, deep dive as to what the future applications would look like and also setting a framework as how they would be built, what they should be classified, how they should not be classified and really laying out that foundational framework for again, our future applications. As that comes out, things go dark again. But little do we know, there's a lot of work being done on uh, on the back burner. And as we come into 2017 and 2019, this is when the industry just explodes. Things go wild. We see a ton of new projects. We see a ton of companies. We see a ton of funding. We see a ton 
happen in a very short amount of time. And with that, we saw a lot of early developments, a lot of building of core infrastructure, uh, things that were necessary to allow for today, here in 2020 and future, decentralized applications to be viable, to actually be applications that consumers and enterprises can use. Uh, but once we turned that corner into 2019, we noticed things were missing. Some of the plumbing, some of the piping, something was still missing. And a lot of that came around scalability. And a lot of that came to adoption. But now, as we look into 2020, 2020 really is where the decentralized applications or distributed application story begins. This is where we really start to see this world unfold of where the future of our applications go. And when we talk about applications here in the rest of today's discussion, we're not just talking about mobile apps. We're also talking about web applications. We're talking about enterprise. We're talking about consumer. We're looking at infrastructure. We're looking at it all. Anything that is considered an application that we may use is what we're going to be talking about. And why this is so fundamental here in 2020 is we saw decentralized finance really start to emerge. We saw infrastructure and scaling become center stage as they were once lacking in 2019 and years previously. Decentralized identity became an absolute requirement going into the end of the 2020, into the, the next decade. Data, how we're using data, how we're not using data, privacy, and the storage of that data became questioned. And now we're starting to see the beginning of this fundamentals of where things should go. We're also starting to see new funding, new business models. We're starting to see the idea of how all of this big, exciting puzzle gets put together. But that all being said, we're still in the very first inning, very first inning of all of this. Even though we're 12 years in, we're still in the very first inning and there's still so much more to come. And to further validate that for all of us, you know, looking at the entire blockchain landscape, back in 2018, as Alexa mentioned, education, I love it. I, I love this industry, I thrive on it. I think it's so, so fascinating to watch how this continues to evolve and thrive. Going back to 2018, we started tracking where this industry was, what it was, uh, who was in it, who was not, how to categorize it, how to define it, how to build a taxonomy around it. And so in 2018, on the end of it, looked at about 400 companies, what made up the industry. And this was after reviewing about 1,500. And quarter by quarter, we continue to see this industry evolve. And decentralized applications decided to really dive deep in that because it was going to be a core at the end of last year, 2019. And as you can see, we went from just around 400 companies growing up to almost 800 to then 200 in the decentralized application stack and what it took to build an application to then turning this corner here in 2020, where this new era begins, where we're starting to see next generation applications to all of a sudden we're seeing over a thousand companies enter this landscape. So I've now reviewed with us over 5,000 companies to make up what you're gonna see today. Those 1,100 companies and then some where it comes to businesses, it comes to funds, it comes to accelerator programs like plug and play. There's over a thousand different groups in this landscape, in this industry that are focused on making this industry successful. And not only that, but billions of dollars going to work for it. And here as we round out the end of the year, what does that look like? Well, I can tell you, it's a changing game. It's a very serious game at that where we're starting to see the seriousness of this entire industry really take shape as well. Going into 2020, you've seen this before in our industry 4.0 landscape, and I just wanted to show it again as context. This is that blockchain landscape. This is the 1,100 plus companies and funds that are focused on the industry. We're gonna be talking about some of those today. We're gonna be diving deep, but Particularly, we're gonna focus on that little highlighted box right there. And that highlighted box is the area of decentralized applications. And those decentralized applications, or what I like to call the stack, this is what it takes to make a decentralized application. These are the building blocks. From left to right, we're gonna walk through this and talk about all the pieces and the components. Because for me and for us here at Moeco, when we thought about the next generation of applications, what were going to be the components needed? 
what was going to be the building blocks, those Legos, those Lincoln logs, whatever you want to refer to, what was it going to be to make this possible? And how are they going to have to work? When you look back at how a typical mobile web or typical application is built, it was very standard, very linear, very vertical, and it's, it's, uh, it's stacked. But when it comes to decentralized or distributed applications, as Alexa is going to talk about here in just a bit, it's all over the map. It's all over. So we wanted to really focus on this and show everybody how these applications will be built, provide you the tools, the necessary information, but also understand, guess what? You don't have to go left to right. You can actually pick out pieces of this because as we've talked about in previous webinars and we'll continue to reaffirm today, as we look at our future infrastructures, you may find pieces of the distributed or decentralized landscapes that work for your business, not necessarily everything as well. As we jump into this, I love talking about this as well. I love talking about capital because when we look at this industry, it's fun to talk about all the companies we're going to and how all this works, but it also talks, it's interesting to look at where's the money being put and is this real, right? We look at capital as a part of a validation tool. When we looked at this in, earlier in the summer, there was just under $10 billion, 10 billion for the capital B invested. Come full circle here in the beginning of Q4, we're looking at $15 billion invested in the companies that we're gonna be talking about today. As well, we look at the decade previously and we can see how funding has continued to track and continued to tick up specifically in that 2017 to 2019 range. We saw a pop and then we saw this realization of let's let's focus let's focus on now that we've got core infrastructure funded we've got some of these core pieces going let's focus on this next level and that's what we're going to be talking about today also this is a nice little breakdown for everybody and this will be available uh in the back of the presentation uh that we'll refer to as we we wrap for questions but this is a nice little overview of all the investors uh, core top 15 investors in the space and some of their portfolio breakdowns. And what you'll notice across the board, even though Andreessen and uh, DCG or Digital Currency Group are leading, there's a commonality across. A lot of companies that come across in terms of investments, also a lot of focus around, again, infrastructure. Infrastructure. We're going to be talking about applications. We are talking about applications and infrastructure is a core piece of that. And what's really unique is you look at this landscape right here, it's almost identical when you look at who is investing in blockchain, who is investing in decentralization uh, as a whole. So just a, a quick touch point on some of the big funding announcements that we've had uh, here in the third quarter and quarter uh, Q4 and the, just the beginning as we've just started uh, this as well. Uh, I want to call out a consensus. So earlier in the end of the summer, consensus acquired uh, a company called Quorum. Uh, Quorum was a, a private blockchain, an enterprise private blockchain that was created by JP Morgan. And this was something that was very focused around banks and financial institutions and consensus acquired this. At the same time, uh, JP Morgan and their uh, internal business units also put some undisclosed amount of funding into consensus as well. Changing a little bit of the paradigm as to what uh, consensus focus on from a public and private blockchain perspective or permissioned and permission list as well. We also saw, saw Dune Analytics when it comes to data monitoring or analytics, also see some funding. Kasha. So in September, Kasha, a company raised $5 million What's unique about them is they're actually playing at the infrastructure level for that decentralized finance piece. They've just now put in uh, 22 ATM locations off to offering digital currency services along traditional services throughout India. India is a market we're starting to see a ton of activity around blockchain dist distributed technologies and now digital currencies as well. And then of course, Dapper Labs also saw another round of funding here at end of October. We're gonna be talking a little bit about them along with Polkadot uh, and Chain Analysis, uh, WiseKey and a few others uh, as we go through. But just to give you an overview, we've seen just over a hundred million dollars invested in this last uh, half of the year, just around decentralized application. Now let's dive in. So let's dive into the first piece. So looking left to right to that original picture that we showed you guys. Uh, the first piece of this is infrastructure. 
first piece is that what I like to refer to as layer one or L1, uh, as the industry does it, the foundational layer. When you look at building a decentralized application, where to start? Pick your blockchain. Well, where do you start? Uh, do you find something that's public versus private? Do you go with something that's interoperable, that's a service, a, pr a protocol? Where do you begin? So we, we created this map of just looking left to right, focusing on a blockchain or looking at something that's public or private, which Alexa is going to talk to us about here in just a moment. But this particular subsection of that landscape has seen over $10 billion in growing in funding. And a key category to pay attention to here in this part is interoperability. And I'll, I'll come back to that in a moment. But a lot of the development in the area of decentralized applications is mostly focused around Ethereum, which is the leader, uh, Tron, and then EOS, so EOS. Um, but we are starting to see some rising activity from Flow, which is the blockchain created by Dapper Labs, very heavily focused around gaming, uh, non-fungible tokens and this idea of digital collectibles. Hedera Hashgraph, um, seeing a very rapid progression of speeds and transactions. And Polkadot. And Polkadot has not only seen a little bit of funding, but also Polkadot focuses in that interoperability space, um, helping to connect uh, multiple blockchains and create a bridge. Another one I want to mention as well is also BSN, the Blockchain Service Network. This is a, a group created out of uh, China and focuses on, <clears throat> pardon me, a big, huge interoperability uh, play around connecting many blockchain uh, services into each other uh, to create applications that don't not only thrive for Asia, but for the global world as well. And there's tons of groups that have been partnering with this uh, as well. But before we dive into deeper, I want to come back to that private public discussion. Uh, Alexa, I want to bring you in here. You have a lot of experience as well around private public, what that means, what that doesn't mean. And I know at Moeco, we're actually working around some of these things. So if you can jump into this a little bit, tell us a little bit more about private public, what that all means and, and how Moeco is playing a role. Yeah, thanks, Kyle. So I really think that you gave a very great picture and overview about the whole ecosystem. And that's important to understand uh, that there is a variety of, of uh, protocols and uh, you can get lost in that basically. But uh, the beauty of it is that both uh, corporates and startups can uh, use these protocols and can operate within um, certain protocols, right? It's, uh, I, I would start from um, giving a little bit of a background of who we are and I think that's important. Because originally, getting back to your Kyle's timeline, um, so my co-founder Mitt is uh, my technical co-founder. He is a creator of the platform called Moeco. Um, so he was the early adopter, starting from 2008, as you just shared about Satoshi, right? So that was the time when he was on it and really understood what, 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 is, what is the potential of the whole thing that is starting to evolve. Nobody understood at that time what was happening, but um, he has built a, a platform um, um, being an early adopter of the whole uh, idea of decentralized applications. Uh, so the, the platform uh, appeared um, in 10 years actually, uh, but as a product, um, it uh, was uh, about decentralized applications of the data. Uh, so we created a platform for IoT developers so they could uh, decentralize uh, the data uh, from the devices. This was just one of applications of how it could be uh, applied to data. And um, that was a um, um, financial application for that as well. Uh, but later on, uh, we realized that um, we want to bring some value to the corporate world. And we use the, the same platform, uh, but totally pivoted towards the enterprise. So I guess that's why we're talking to you now, because we really got the point of 
what is the um, distributed applications in general, but how it could be applied to, to the business is I think very important. Uh, we still use private blockchain, EOS blockchain for uh, distributing the data, uh, but uh, we pivoted the platform towards sourcing the data from the physical infrastructure uh, and uh, providing this data to a single client, a uh, corporate client, which um, is very efficient um, using private blockchain, obviously. So um, the client has the whole control over data and has 100% ownership of the data. And uh, we source the data and make the hash of the data so we could uh, have the confirmation of each da data transaction from the physical uh, item, we, we tag it with a sensor. So it's the sensor actually is source the information. And each time the um, information is being sent to the platform, we have the confirmation of that. That's kind of a beautiful part of the, the blockchain uh, within our ecosystem. So again, um, we could use and collaborate with any of these protocols or blockchain as a startup. And I believe that uh, if any of the corporate client is building their own product internally, that could also be, a, be of an interest here, could use any of this um, protocols or blockchains to um, as an underlying technology uh, to build their product. So our product is built on a private blockchain, as I uh, mentioned before, and that's a great application for enterprise. And uh, data ownership, I believe, is one of the most sensitive points uh, for everyone, especially these days. Um, and blockchain is a great tool for that. Uh, I think that's... Um, we can dive deeper into that, but I don't want to disturb the whole flow. And that's, I believe, could be a separate topic of the webinar at some point. Absolutely. And we're going to be talking about that here in just a minute. And as Alexa mentioned, I mean, there's there's what, what Moeco has provided on the IoT side is, is foundational. And what's great about blockchain and, and building these distributed or decentralized applications is that you can build on top of them, right? It's it's a, there's not one solution, which is exciting. There's also pieces of that puzzle you can pull together. So if in your current infrastructure, for those that are tuning in, if you're using uh, one particular uh, set of, uh, of infrastructure, there is the opportunity to plug in to what we're doing here at Moeco or others uh, as well. And one of the pieces we're gonna talk about next uh, is, is that scalability. And this to me is, I think one of the most exciting pieces of uh, when it comes to building decentralized applications. Everything in here, uh, when it comes to what to pay attention to, pay attention to it all. This is the plumbing. This is what makes all of what we're talking about work and scale and grow. And this is where that distributed piece comes into so importantly uh, that both Zach mentioned and then also Alexa as well. Um, and before we get in, again, going left to right, so looking at that, that layer two protocol or those, those scaling solutions, looking at storage, how are you thinking about doing in terms of distributed storage or distributed computing, looking at oracles and how you are using data validators uh, to make sure that the data that you're bringing in from an outside source, whether that be a, a sensor, for instance, or an API is trusted and validated and then pushed back into uh, your uh, front end, wherever that may be. Two, then again, typical database structures of on and off uh, chain and on and off prem, as, as Alexa may mention here in just a few moments, of where that data goes. So to me, the scaling, this layer two, L2, the plumbing, this is where you really want to focus. And if anything, if you're building your first decentralized application, this is probably where you're going to begin. Uh, if you haven't yet worked with a blockchain, instead, you're going to be looking at how to do distributed computing, how to do uh, distributed storage, and again, that trust of uh, data validation. So uh, here's the number of companies we've seen over a billion dollars uh, invested in this uh, category and growing. All of these are, are great areas to watch. Uh, as Alexa mentioned, you know, Moeco very focused on, on the IoT logistics supply chain scaling solutions. We also have a, a company here, Matic, uh, in the layer two section. 
uh, that's focused on gaming. Um, same with Solona uh, over there in the red box. Lightning Labs is a very big company when it comes to scaling solutions and increasing your transaction speed. So as you're sending data from point A to point B or uh, 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 currency in some cases as well. When we look at storage, we think about companies like Storage J or Storage, um, a very well-known, large growing company. We also think of Airweave. Airweave is a company that uh, is the idea of forever storage, something that is gonna continue and never get lost. Uh, forever storage on the blockchain and a serverless web. This company has also seen a ton of funding and now uh, also getting into that picture with Airweave is Filecoin, uh, as we're starting to see them start to, to emerge uh, onto the landscape. IPFS uh, is another company, Infra, all of these focus on the storage side. When we get to compute, compute typically we've looked at cloud, looked at the typical cloud companies. Well, I can tell you right now, guess what all those cloud companies are doing? They're getting into topics we've discussed, edge. They're getting into uh, blockchain as a service. And now they're getting into even more so distributed computing. And that's why you see Microsoft, you see IBM on here, you see Amazon and others as they're all playing a role in this. And Definity uh, is a company that gets highly talked about uh, in this space as they've opened up the internet computer uh, or what they've been working on to third party developers to do massive distributed computing uh, on, on a large, large growing scale. Uh, as well. On the Oracle side, I'll just touch uh, on, on one company in particular. There's several here or two actually. Fan Protocol is a cross-chain uh, data Oracle that I've been tracking a little bit, uh, up and coming company for you to pay attention to. But Chainlink is probably one of the most notable uh, next approvable. Chainlink has partnered with several companies in the industry and continues to grow that list of partners as they again work as a trusted verifiable source of data as it comes in from a third party, again, like a sensor, a machine, whatever that may be, uh, and make sure that that has, has been trusted and then comes out to your application. On-chain, off-chain. Uh, before we get into that, Alexa, do you wanna talk a little bit about on-prem, off-prem uh, storage that I know Moeco has been working on and some of the experience you've seen there? Uh, yeah, sure. I think it's uh, worth sharing. Um, as we talk to enterprise companies, they obviously have their own clouds and they want to store the information there. And as they talk to startups, I believe it's hard for them to trust those startups and uh, uh, place their information inside startups cloud, for example. Uh, I can understand that for sure, because I've been observing a lot of startups failures and that sometimes hurts, uh, not only from the uh, emotional side, but also from the practical side. Where does the data go? And like, how do we extract that? And how do we manage that later on if that fails, right? So there is no guarantee uh, in that case. So we, uh, we understand that and we're totally fine with that because we provide uh, three options to store the data. Um, uh, one is in, in our cloud, of course, we still have it. Uh, another one is um, in the customer's cloud. So um, enterprise clients would prefer to store the data in their cloud, but also there is the third one. We can also install, uh, install our solution on-premise, which is uh, in very interesting option for most of our clients. They would prefer that option uh, to any of the cloud options. And um, as we see this trend, uh, we are trying to move with with it, with move forward with it, and uh, just provide this solution on premise and to source all the information about the company's assets and infrastructure and provide them the digital picture of their facility. Uh, simply on their fingertips, but also uh, storing the whole data about their ecosystem or logistics, if we may. We also work with logistics companies in their clouds or on their premises. That was a very interesting insight um, that we've learned uh, at Moico. 
And I think there's a variety of options. And uh, also I really like the, the landscape of different companies that you have provided here and only observing them, we can understand what's, what are the trends and what's happening there. Absolutely. And, and as, as Alexa mentioned, you know, kind of looking at this and observing the trends and where things are going. So as we, we've picked our infrastructure, we've picked our blockchain, right? Or we've, we've seen if we need it. We've, we've looked at scaling and exactly what Alexa just mentioned is those puzzle pieces. What do we need? What do we not need? Um, so we've picked our blockchain, we've picked our, our plumbing, our scaling solutions or what we need. Now it's time to connect all those dots. And it's time to talk about smart contracts or just that contract layer or layer three. Um, this is a, an interesting layer. Again, this is what kind of acts as that glue bringing everything together. We're seeing going on $6 billion here in invested. A uh, huge category to watch is this identity and authentication as we're starting to see that as a huge trend, not only in 2020, but looking at the decade ahead is how does, how does authentication play a role in all of our uh, infrastructure, all of our applications, and also identity, and specifically DID or decentralized identity. These are, are core pieces that we look at when we're looking at the bigger piece of landscape and then also future of applications that people are really focusing on uh, as well. And I, I've called out a few companies here on the on the left, uh, Arc Block, Beyond Identity, Proxy, that all focus on identity, uh, Simba Chain, a uh, huge company that's focusing and growing on the smart contracts. Uh, side and then web assembly. So if we look at this holistically, so when we start up at the top of smart contracts, Simba Chain, working with the, the, uh, the US uh, defense groups uh, on building smart contracts into some of, their, uh, some of their platforms. We're doing that here at Moeco as well, which I'll give Alexa here in a moment a uh, chance to speak about. We go down to identity. As I mentioned, there's uh, a few of these different companies. Proxy seen over $40 million in funding, helping to bring that once physical uh, sign-on uh, or authentication into now the digital world uh, as we look to, again, those applications and even gaming solutions um, as well. We come over to governance, and this is a unique category. I'm not going to touch on more than this because it's a bigger uh, discussion, but how are these things governed? Where is the control? Where is the say? Where are the levers pulled? That's a, another rising area in this part of the the connecting the dots layer, um, and then compiler. So now that we've put all these pieces together, we got to build it. We got to code it somehow. Um, but all these pieces may use different languages. And so compilers sit there to help bring all this together. WebAssembly does a great job of this, of compiling all these different languages in one central or one common language and thread uh, looking forward. And also want to bring up uh, one key uh, group here. Uh, before Alexa goes into the smart contracts discussion is also um, Open Zeppelin. So Open Zeppelin created a, a, a new smart contracts program just recently called Defender. And this is a platform to automate the development of smart contract ops or operations and building of decentralized finance, so DeFi applications on Ethereum specifically. This is a group effort led by them with Compound Labs, Agave, um, uh, DYX, uh, DYDX, pool together, balancer, and a handful of others uh, as well. So if you're building in the decentralized finance space, uh, definitely check out Open Zeppelin's uh, Defender. Uh, Alexa, anything you want to add around smart contracts and their importance uh, in the space as, as uh, it comes to Moeco and what we're looking at as well? Uh, so... According to our experience, as I shared at the beginning, we were originally a platform for developers where a lot of um, participants are involved. And uh, we tried to bring as many uh, people as we can to, to build a community. And uh, we originally started with uh, highlighting this, this topic of smart contracts, but now as we shifted towards enterprise we we completely just uh, uh narrowing down to delivering the data directly to the client so we we kind of are not emphasizing on that which is okay but i think that's um that is an important part of decentralized applications and that is one of the most widely um used application of blockchain in general the smart contracts and uh 
I know that there is a lot of interesting companies now developing uh, that, are, that, that have that as a main purpose. Um, and definitely that, that is a um, um, very good application of, of, the, of dApps. And, and then if we know that there is a confirmation of any deal, let's say any, anything that happened, um, especially if we need to provide that confirmation to third parties or potentially government, I hope in a while that would be adopted. That's, um, that becomes a tool. That becomes a tool to, to uh, create these confirmations in a digital way and uh, show it and again, send it in a digital way uh, to um, any of those who are interested in, in any, any data um, transactions that are happening. So yes. basically I think that's a, that's a good tool, definitely used widely. And again, I see a lot of companies that are now building uh, these days and building their own smart contracts as I know it. And, and that's, a, that's a, a great point to, to what Alexa said. I mean, she, Moeco recognized the need or the not uh, for that piece of the puzzle and actually were able to remove it or extract it uh, to focus on something different, but still have the rest of the core pieces that they have, Alexa has mentioned in the past. So uh, for, for those that are listening, uh, and tuning in today, that's again, smart contracts can be one piece of your bigger puzzle. It doesn't have to be everything uh, as well. And another company I want to come out, uh, call out to for those that are listening, um, Quantstamp. Quantstamp is a company that's actually doing the auditing because as Alexa mentioned, this is a core piece, um, you know, as a transaction has been completed. Customer, uh, uh, company A wants to send something to company B and they want to they want to put that onto a smart contract. How do you verify it? How do you audit these things uh, to make sure that it is clean, that it is uh, verified and is trusted? Uh, Quantstamp is a company that's starting to do that. And they're also working with Ethereum 2.0, which we'll get to in a minute, um, all the way to Polkadot and several other applications to help verify uh, those pieces. So we've picked our infrastructure. We've connected the dots. We've, we've picked our scaling solution, pardon me, we've connected the dots. Now let's get to that layer four, that application layer. And that's where we start to get this to a point where we're starting to show this off uh, to the world. So we're picking our APIs to bring in that third party data that Alexa mentioned. That's where we're bringing in wallets or other devices to store any kind of, uh, whether it's token or digital collectible or digital good or digital twin, whatever it may be um, on the consumer or the enterprise side, that's where we're storing it. We also uh, are starting to get data on these applications, what's happening, what's not happening on all levels. So we mentioned Dune Analytics was a company that raised a little bit of capital. Uh, Covalent uh, also just raised a little capital here at the end of uh, Q3 into Q4. Uh, these are areas that you should be paying attention to as well as you're building your application. One I do wanna call out MetaMask, uh, seeing over a million monthly active users, their browser extension for right now, probably something more in the very near future, that's allowing for decentralized applications to be connected to end users, trying to create a less frictionous point uh, for the future of these as consumers. Uh, Brave, which is a browser as well that focuses on the dApp space, has seen over 20 million monthly active users a uh, huge growth uh, over the last quarter. We're seeing over $6 billion in growing uh, into this space and also now starting to see DNS, so domain name is naming services, uh, starting to pop up uh, as well in this space. Now, as we put all these pieces together, we've picked the infrastructure, we've picked our scaling solutions, we've connected those dots, we've now brought this application to life with third-party data and others, and we're now putting a front facing on this. Awesome. We've got all the puzzle pieces. What if you don't want all the puzzle pieces? What if you just want the one click solution to get this going and to get this moving forward? Well, that's what this LX or this layer X is. Uh, and that is the developer platforms. There's plenty of companies out there, uh, just to name a few, Blockstack, Dapper Labs, Liquid Apps, Dapp Suite, and others who are all focusing on providing you those one click solutions uh, to building your decentralized applications. Again, pieces or the full picture uh, as well. So tons of, of, of companies to pay attention to in this space. Dapp Suite, I do want to call out, uh, is actually uh, working with Salesforce 
um, on those uh, smart contract side, so on auto executing smart contracts to help Salesforce customers maintain their system of record, having consistency and a common frame of reference across uh, the systems throughout all of internal and external Salesforce customers uh, as well. Now, few trends, few things to pay attention to. These all build on each other. So we'll cover them quickly. Decentralized finance, not just DeFi from a standpoint of uh, decentralized finance, some of the applications we've seen around lending and loans to uh, payments, but everything on the enterprise as well. We're looking at back office, remittance. How do we make sure that everything is handled internally along with our customers and then externally as well? And from decentralized finance, we start to look at the world of gaming and entertainment. Gaming entertainment, how do decentralized applications? This is actually one of the biggest areas still that decentralized applications have a role in today. We're seeing billions of dollars still putting into that space, going into the virtual economy. And this is something we've touched on in earlier previous discussions around Industrial 4.0. We're spending our lives more connected and more digitally than ever. Well, what is that gonna to lead to? That's gonna to lead to this thriving virtual economy. Thriving because this is something that uh, PNB Parabolis or Parabellus, excuse me, group has predicted to be over a hundred billion dollars in the next couple of years. And already we're starting to see people generate anywhere from 25 to six figures a year in this virtual economy. We're seeing games being produced, but we're also seeing virtual worlds come to life and marketplaces come into play where all of that, all of that is happening, whether it's microtransactions to tokenization to our personal time, et cetera, it's all being monitored in this new virtual world or digital economy that's being created, which leads us into the tokenization. And the idea that one day everything will be tokenized. Um, something that once was a dream that's now becoming a reality. We've got the SEC chair that came out and said the idea that, you know, stocks themselves, everything could be very well tokenized, going from what's one was once paper stock certificates to everything being tokenized and digital. We've got uh, Animico brands that looking at, uh, along with Dapper Labs of uh, games for F1 to soccer or football, to Mattel, to Dr. Seuss, uh, to Garfield, to many others that all are now being tokenized in some way, shape, or form. We're also looking at our individual selves and how can we tokenize ourselves? How can we tokenize our time so that we can get paid for what we do? How can we look at tokenizing our future earnings, or our future school, or other areas as well? So the idea of future of work, the future of uh, education that uh, thing that men that Alexa mentioned of taking what was once physical and bringing it digital into those digital twins that plays a role into tokenization and where things are going. Just to touch on this as well, NFTs and the digital economy, a ton of activity we've seen here in the year of 2020 and more so uh, on the second half, a lot in the consumer space, which speaks to the power that decentralized applications is starting to have. Starting, we're still in the early innings of this. We're still seeing the early adoption of some of these uh, applications. And we're starting to see the early days of individuals going into the tokenization space. And again, areas on the enterprise starting to get tokenized, um, not just with the SEC, but we're going to talk about a few enterprises here in just a moment. So Q1 and Q2, just wanted to show this as reference. We saw uh, Facebook Libra get talked about. We saw Solonium Space Talk about over $400,000 in virtual land being sold. Hyundai building and releasing their first decentralized application. We saw China starting to do a few little different activities around what was now called the BSN, the Blockchain Service Network. Brave started to see a little bit more activity. Reddit started to get into the idea of tokenization. Honeywell. We also saw Ernst & Young. Big, again, enterprise groups getting into the space. We also saw a lot of testing and trials around some of that infrastructure and some of those new applications and the need for security, the need for auditing, the need for validation is, again, we're still in first innings. So where are we now? Turning the corner, looking at the second half. 
lots happening. This is just a small scraping of the surface. Again, consensus acquired JP Morgan's quorum, looking at the future of what that all means for the enterprise. JP Morgan also released their commercial ready project, Ubin, and this idea of digital currencies and what that means for the future of tokenization. This is something they were doing in, in conjunction with uh, the Singaporean government and also Tessamec. JP Morgan also launched a new uh, blockchain unit to focus on, guess what? Digital tokens for commercial use. China released a huge, enormous, 445 page a blueprint as to how they're thinking about blockchain becoming a blockchain hub in the next couple of years and also how they are thinking about enterprise use cases and applications. And this is not just in headlines. These are actual things in actions. We saw the digital yuan now not only get launched, but also seeing over $300 million US in terms of transaction volume here in November. We've got the OCC along with crypto banks or digital current BC banks starting to come to life. We're seeing the likes of PayPal enter with new services coming in and Visa getting incredibly aggressive at funding this distributed future Alexa and I have been talking about. We have Kona, the Coke One uh, of North America, starting to provide applications around their bottling services. Volvo Mercedes getting into this. We're seeing Germany look at how they can also focus on decentralized applications for their entire energy ecosystem. Vodafone, Telefonica, Deutsche Telekom also getting into this space. Uh, South Korea putting a huge effort around decentralized identity as 1 million South Koreans actually decided to opt out of having a physical driver's license and go towards a, a blockchain based ID. Now, what does this all mean? Where is this all going? So we look at uh, the the rest of 2020, we got a little bit of time left, left, so let's see where we go, but also going ahead for 2021. Well, first and foremost, before we get into this, uh, this is all good and well, but we've still got a lot to overcome. You know, Apple is pushing back and actually uh, pushing against decentralized applications in the uh, App Store as they're, they're holding back from uh, iOS applications being able to have digital tokens or, or digital currency within their application. And also um, looking at how things are classified or not classified, consumer or enterprises to centralized finance. Um, but enterprise, uh, I'm gonna mention that in just one second. So where are we going? Where are things are now? So infrastructure, I talked about these in the beginning of the year. Here we are still at the end of the year, my predictions stay true. And I think they're gonna be validated even further going into the next year. Infrastructure gets faster. We saw a ton of money go into and a ton of improvements around scalability. And now we're starting to see the leveraging of the edge and the future of connectivity, including 5G, which Alexa and I and some special guests will be talking about in our next webinar as well. Interoperability will become the standard. Blockchains we talked about, private, public, they need to talk to each other. Not everyone's using the same, they need to talk. That's gonna bring some new challenges. Decentralized identity, that idea from physical to digital identities, that's gonna become the standard. We're gonna see more companies in that space. The one click service or the X as a service, we're gonna see more of that, more no code based solutions. APIs are coming more into play, bringing in that what was once traditional mobile, web, et cetera, applications into this next world of a distributed. 10 large enterprises going to be rolling out decentralized applications before the end of the year. This is a prediction I made in, in January of 2020. Here we are in November, the beginning of, we're coming out of the end of the year. Right now, I've mentioned a few, but just to recap, Salesforce, Toyota. Toyota, Hyundai has already launched their first decentralized application. Toyota is actually in the process, one of their business units, to do the same for internally for 2,500 of their employees. To do a little bit of an exchange to create a reward system internally for their employees. BMW doing something very similar. KPMG just launched an application around climate and accounting infrastructure. Ernst & Young has been in this space. Kona, Turner Sports, getting into some stuff around gaming. I think my prediction might be true. Um, we'll see. Digital currencies or CBDCs, including CBDCs, so central bank digital currencies, taking a broader role. We're gonna see some major launches. Uh, we've already started to see China's. We're starting to see more talk about US. We're seeing also Cambodia, Thailand, Singapore, and others uh, really take efforts there. Digital collectibles and assets, 
will be a huge, huge part of 2021 as we're starting to see more activity there in uh, 2020, including the digital twins that Alexa and I spoke about in previous webinars and a little bit today. Decentralized finance goes beyond just consumers and looks more into uh, the retail gaming uh, industries, but also an enterprise. And the virtual economy takes fold as we hit into 2021 and this new model around direct to avatar. So moving past direct to consumer and now looking at those digital representations of ourselves as individuals and businesses and how we can sell into those. So last but not least, where are the areas of opportunity for you to be focusing on building blocks, on and off ramps, bringing things into the areas of decentralized and distributed and bringing them out. Bridges, connecting things together, whether that be APIs, that be blockchains as a whole. Identity and authentication, security. As Alexa mentioned around data, we still need more activity and focus around the security of data and data management. Future of work and the entire process there, gaming and non-fungible tokens, marketplaces, how we will transact around all of this, whether it's enterprise or consumer, looking at customer and fan engagement and then tokenization. So those digital twins, taking what was once physical and bringing it to once digital. Um, talked a lot of, about a lot today. We've only got a few minutes here, which we'll, we'll be able to take a question or two. If not, you definitely can reach out to Alexa and I uh, for further follow-up, but talked about a lot. So what should you walk away with today? Distributed and decentralized applications as a whole are incredibly powerful. But again, we're in just the first innings of all of this. We talked about how this has already been a 12-year game. There's going to be many more years ahead of us. And it's not a race that you need to take everything from beginning to end and call it a day. Instead, look at all of those pieces. Start in the building blocks. Figure out what works for you and your business and your infrastructure. If all of it works, great. If only pieces do, test and try and figure out how your applications can best serve you internally and externally for your customers and then later for consumers as well. Look to that infrastructure layer, look to that scaling layer, look to those connection or that contract, those connecting the dots layer, and then look to applications. But remember, you're not alone in this and there's plenty of great companies out there like us here at Moeco focused on the internet of things and like others that can help provide you this, not only as a service, but also as a one-click deployment as well. So a ton to be had, a ton to be learned, a ton further to be discussed, but the point is you're not alone in this. There's a ton of areas to work on, figure out where to start and pick, play a little bit, test and see what works best for you. Um, I'm Kyle and Alexa mentioned uh, a ton of stuff as well. So she's the CEO, a COO, pardon me, and co-founder of Moeco. We're gonna be back here with you in another week to talk about the future of connectivity not only on distributed computing and some of the distributed technologies we talked about today, but 5G or also maybe 6G and also uh, edge and edge computing and where all of this plays a role in the future of our applications in the future of our infrastructures and the future of our enterprises as well. And so with that, I think we maybe have a minute or two. Again, I apologize, uh, we, we took a lot of time today. But a big, again, thank you to the entire plug and play organization, Allie, Tiffany, um, and, and team for making Zach as well, for making all this happen for Alexa, um, Moeco, and I uh, as a whole here. We're super passionate and super excited that you guys gave us this chance and also for all of you tuning in. And uh, there's our respected contact information if we run out of time uh, as well. We are actually all running out of time, but before that, I just want to answer one question yeah. real quick uh, from the Q&A uh, box uh, before we finish. So uh, just to the point of complexity of things that we have shared today, and I understand that it is it looks complex and that's true in a way, but using blockchain for IoT devices uh, versus just uh, using an end-to-end -end encryption, we uh, actually do use an end-to-end -end encryption, but for a lot of times we need the confirmation of the data transfer from uh, from the device uh, to the client. So in that way, we use a blockchain to create a hash and, and provide that confirmation. So it's, uh, it's a lot of complexity just from the first glance, but uh, the platform was designed in that way. And that's for the benefits of all the parties. 
Um, and really, thanks for the question. And if you have more, please reach out to me or Kyle with the email you have see here. It's very easy and straightforward. Alexa at myoko.io or Kyle at myoko.io. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Thanks, Kyle, for uh, sharing and uh, this educational session that was a great overview of every piece of uh, the whole decentralized system. Thank you. Yeah, thank you again, Alexa, and thank you to the Plug and Play organization, and thank you all for tuning in, and we'll, uh, we'll see you all here next week as we talk about the future of connectivity. See you next week. Have a great week. Bye, everybody.